Hello. So uh, I've come up uh, this morning from Devon to talk to you about cider making. So um, my name's Sam Heaton. I am Ben's brother and obviously dad talking to you about sweet corn. Um, so I make websites for a living. I have no you know, commercial experience of, of making cider. I just thought I'd have a go at it. Um, so we've, I, I've got a couple of apple trees in my back garden. My dad's got hundred or so trees of, of lots of different varieties and he planted about six or seven years ago and we thought well living in Devon it's the it's the right thing to do basically so we've I, I when I first started I, if I can let you open when I first started I started looking on the internet and researching um, basically what you know, lot, watching videos on YouTube of lots of Americans with beards making what they call hard cider. So, um, and so you get normal rough cider and hard cider, and, and the rough cider being the sort of juice, and, and, and hard cider being the alcoholic. Uh, so, um, yeah, I bought a press off the internet. So this is me and a mate of mine in my back garden. So you can see it's a, a little press with a, a wood chipper and a bucket. And I bought a couple of demi johns, and, and we made some juice. And basically, it's it's in its, its basic form. You you make some juice, and you stick it in a demi john, and it just starts bubbling. You stick a, a bubbler on the top, so it lets the the air out, and it and it starts making it. Um, and it's it's pretty idiot proof, and it's <laughs> and it's first says, but. You can then think, well, I'm going to make it a little bit better and, and look at the, the bits that, that, that makes it easier to produce lots of it and make it taste a little bit better because our first attempts weren't... I think we dubbed it suicider because it was, it was pretty nasty. So, um, the first thing I experienced was that the, the press I originally bought wasn't great. So, don't buy a rubbish press. Um, this I bought off the internet, it was about 200 quid, so it wasn't cheap. They never gave my money back. I would look for a good big press. You know, I know Ben's got a, a pal of his that has a, an interesting press that uses air. So ha have a look for the biggest press you can get that takes as much you know, pulp and gets you as much juice. Because this little thing, it looked great on the internet, but actually it was useless. So, um, so here you can see it's a tiny little thing. So I'm, I found on the web uh, a guy came back from Bulgaria who owned a bar out there and he bought this 500-litre uh, massive great big press with a big... and it, it was used originally as a, as a fruit press and you know, obviously yeah, works great for apples. Um, so what do you need? Um, lots of apples, um, a mill for chopping them up. Uh, originally I used a, a wood chipper, as you can see here, the, the green thing. Um, I had to modify a bit and, and hack it apart a bit so I could stuff apples through it, but all the safety features had to come off. But it, it was alright, it got very clogged up very quickly, so we spent our life tapping it and getting it, and it, it wasn't great. So we, we, we actually I'll come on to it, we found a, a, great, pre, a great mill that, that works really well. So um, a press, lots of containers, 25 litres, uh, a pasteuriser. My dad managed to borrow a, a great pasteuriser, but a pasteuriser is essentially just a big bucket of hot water. You know, you can use a tea and you can use anything. It's got to be, if you're going to take the juice and turn it into, and, and pasteurize it so it doesn't, you know, it takes the life out of it and just keep it as juice, um, then just, I think it's just got to be at 70 degrees for about 20 minutes. So it's, it's pretty easy to do. Just boil it or, you know, just keep it, keep it fairly hot for 20 minutes. Um, Funnel bottles, so these are the sort of bottles we used. I think they're a bit tougher, so that um, if it, normal wine bottles will probably be all right, but um, you know, it depends if you want to spend money or not. Uh, Demi Johns, which are the big sort of five litre things, I'll come to in a bit. A bubbler on the top, which just releases the air out and doesn't let oxygen get in. A siphoning tube is really useful. Um, really must have one or you probably, you know, you'll be getting it all over the floor. Uh, Asorbic acid, which is basically vitamin C. Um, it's pretty easy to get from any brew shop or on the, on the internet. Um, a good cleaning solution and a bit of yeast if you want to make sure it's a bit. I, normally you don't need it, but if you want to put some in, it's not going to hurt. 
Um, so, so this is our apple orchard. Um, you can see, as my father's the accountant, you can tell it's pretty organized, but that each row is a different uh, type of uh, tree. So when we were juicing them, we, we picked one particular variety, kept them together, and, and made a juice of and, and then when you come to blending it, you've got one very light. So you, we've got juicers, we've got cider apples, and we've got eaters, and we've got cookers. And so we, we juiced a bit of everything and see what we got and sat in the kitchen and having some coffee and juice, you know, putting it together. And so, yeah, lo lots of different types. The, the apples, you can, he's had um, the local Orchard Lives uh, people in, you know, tending the apple trees. So they're, they're in fantastic condition and, and they're going to produce, I think, in a couple of years, sort of three or four tonnes per tree. So, you know, it's, well, I don't know if that's true or not, but there's going to be a huge amount of apples, you know, very quickly. So, the other thing, um, don't pick any apples um, that you wouldn't eat. So, anything that's a bit manky or horrible, um, yeah, leave for the, for the sheep or the birds or whatever. Uh, only pick the apples right at the end of the season. So, we, when we first did it, the first year, we just got all overexcited and just picked them. Um, just because we, we thought it would be a good day to do it. But actually, you want to wait to the very, very end till they're absolutely, they're, they're literally they're fallen on the floor and you pick them up as windfalls. Um, and they'll be sweeter and, and much, much nicer. So the, the juice that you get, it's the, the first year we did it, it was very bitter and it wasn't, wasn't that nice. But the, if, you, if you leave it much later, it, it makes a real difference. So the apple blends, these are different types of apples that we've got, so lovely Devon varieties, there's hundreds of old you know, types of English apples, but these are Bickington Grey, Fair Maid of Devon and Sweet Cleave, so at each, each type of apple will have a really distinct, one came out that we pressed it and it was like syrup, you know, it's, it's, it's brown and thick and gooey, and another one was, was light and clear and pink, and it was very, very different taste, and you, you blend them all together, and it's, it's, it's great, but, but very, very different. So, collect loads of apples is the first thing. We got, having loads of buckets, it really helps, you know, it's, it sounds, so, but it's, it's, we did it the first time in a trailer, and it was a real hassle. And you can keep them all separately very nicely, and, you know. um, So, washing the apples in cold water, um, just getting all the slugs and horribleness off them, uh, you know. Proves the flavour a bit. Um, so this is the mill. This is what we found. This is a Vigo mill, and you basically just get a bucket of apples, pour it in the top, and pulp comes out the bottom. There, there are sort of clubs and societies that have these mills that they lend out. So I'm sure, you know, if you call up, you know, or you call up Vigo and see if you know they must have a, a list of people. We, we've got a guy in Devon that you call him up and he turns up in his truck and lends it to you for ten quid for the day. So it. You know, I think they're about 700 quid new, but they are, if you're going to do lots of apples, then this is what you need. Um, so this is my press. It's the only picture I could find of the press, which is, you can only see half of it, which is a bit rubbish, but it's a big thing and you just crank it down and it, pff, juice comes out the bottom, which is kind of cool, terrible picture. But, um, and you can see the pasteurizer on the right there, um, which you, know, you can get about 15 of these bottles in it. Um, leave it to, to. So, uh, pressing, the, the thing, when you first start, the, the interesting thing is you've got to make sure everything's really clean. Uh, if you get any horribleness in it at all, it'll, it'll really affect the, the juice. And if you go into all that effort of juicing it down, and you know, if it goes off just because you've got some grit in there or whatever, it'd be a, a real bummer. So, get some clean, good sling inclusion, make sure everything's lovely and clean and rinse it all off. Um, so yeah, all the demijohns. Uh, after pressing it, so you put in a bit of this ascorbic acid, and that stops the juice from going brown and, and horrible. So you know when you, you leave an apple out on the side for a bit, it goes horrible. Um, so yeah, heating the bottles in a pasteurizer for 25 minutes at 70 degrees will obviously pasteurize it. Uh, unpasteurized juice will start fermenting within 24 hours and explode, as we found out. So we lent a couple of bottles of juice, and he left it outside his back garden, or back back of the house, and it, one of these bottles went, just great. Um, adding a little yeast to the top of the demijohn, you know, it could 
could be good, but you know, don't worry about it. There's lots of natural uh, yeast in apples. That I think. And use a hydrometer to measure the specific gravity of the juice. Uh, so when you come to drink it, you measure it again, and the difference is the alcoholic level of it. So um, we, made, we made about 100 pints last year, and it was fantastically clear cider, and it was, I think it was about 9% by the time we measured it out, which was... But it tasted, it was incredibly dry, and we'd left it too long, and so it had just gone on and on and on, and, and actually we should have, you know, so we, I think we left it for about five or six months, and you actually should, you know, I think that after six weeks you can start drinking it, and if the more, longer you leave it, you know, the more clear it will become and the, and the drier it will become. So it's a real case of, you know, keep testing it, keep having a look. Um, when you're, um, so these are the demijohns, this is, this is, a bottle after about 20, well, probably 48 hours, and it's bubbling away nicely. And you can see this is my first attempt, and I had lots of air in the top of it, and you really don't want lots of air. You want to, when you fill up your, the demijohns, you fill it right to the neck, so there's no you know, oxygen in the top of it that will, that will turn it horrible. Um, and when you store it, try and store it in a nice, cool place. The cooler it is, the clearer it will become. So if it's in a Obviously, don't let it freeze, but you know, a nice, and just leave it and leave it and leave it. Um, when you, you also the sediment will drop out of the bottom of it, and you you then sort of drain it into another, you know, clean it, get a couple of spare demijohns and, and drain it into drain it off, and then get rid of the sediment basically. And if you do that a couple of times, so every six weeks, drain it off, you'll end up with lovely clear cider that hopefully tastes nice as long as you've been blending it, right? And, and that's basically it. Um, it's pretty, pretty idiot-proof way to make cider, but uh, yeah, so um, that's basically it. Yeah, any questions? Oh, and there's some nice juice for, to try later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we do.